All right, man, peace. So, brothers, this is going to be the first entry in a series that I'm starting called Are You Ready for Marriage? And the reason why I'm starting that series is because if you pay very close attention, so many of these young black boys, they're being raised in environments where they're being overpowered by female energy. And when I say female energy, I'm not just talking about from the woman. I'm also talking about from the oftentimes simple minded, two dimensional thinking, simp dudes that are around them in these environments. Many men or males today are married and they don't even know up from down because they were never taught anything. So by the time they start to figure out life, they're already two, three kids deep, maybe 10 years deep into a quote unquote marriage that they're unhappy in. Why is that? Because in this society, so many men today are not taught about women. And because they're not taught about women, they have to learn things the hard way. They're taught that women are equal to men. They're taught that quote unquote, a happy wife equals a happy life. Brothers, I have news for you. If the happiness in your life is directly correlated with the happiness of your quote unquote wife, your so-called wife, you're never going to be happy because the woman is never happy at all. For the most part, for the most part, the life of the woman is a lifetime of jealousy and boredom with little bouts of happiness here and there. And that's really what a relationship is about. The relationship is about evaluating who the real person is, who the real woman is underneath that initial facade of being nice and being relatively obsequious or servile to you trying to act as if they're, they're subservient to a man or that they respect the masculine principle. Once you get past that initial facade and the real them starts to come out, the difference between a long-term and a short-term relationship as you should be evaluating it is whether or not you could tolerate who that real person is, who the real woman is. Because as I tell you brothers all the time, the woman is just a child with titties. So is she a five-year-old child or is she a 17-year-old child? That's basically all, you, all you're going to be trying to determine. And I'm sure that certain people are going to be listening to this getting upset. Liberal women, simps or what have you. I really don't give a damn. The point being is this. The so-called black man has to raise his level of understanding and discernment when engaging in these relationships. And that brings us to this case right here with Miss Ashanti Lyles. She's having a dispute with her with her ex-husband who we're going to see in a moment and it's over the fact that he quote unquote cheated but what is going to be revealed is that she was upset with him for cheating while she was also cheating quote unquote so this is going to give us a chance to to really evaluate to pick apart many of the components of modern day relationships and let's see what comes of it so they're going to talk about it i'm going to chime in Ashanti Lyles was married to the defendant, and they have three children. Ashanti admits that she cheated on the defendant one time, but she claims the defendant had an ongoing affair with another woman. Ashanti... Now, brother, did you hear that? This person, Ashanti Lyles, states that she admits that she cheated, quote-unquote, cheated on her husband one time, but that he had an ongoing affair. In other words, what? Even when she's wrong and she acknowledges that she's wrong, She's still trying to create a differentiation between what she did and what he did. And it wasn't like what she did was a quote unquote revenge fuck. She was actually cheating on him, quote unquote, and she did not know that he was doing his own thing. So now it's about the differentiation, the distinction between what she did as opposed to what he did. I tell you brothers this all the time. The main reason why so many of these modern day females in Western society, especially the so-called black woman in the American society, why they get so upset at the, at the notion that a man can have more than one woman is because most of them either have or want to have more than one man. And the reason why the monogamy paradigm was created, number one was for population control, but number two is also to try to exalt that aspect of the mother goddess and the father god. In this society, it leans a little bit more towards the mother goddess. That's why you have the Statue of Liberty. But that's why they allow these women to do whatever they want when it comes to these relationships. That's why they concocted the parameters of divorce or for divorce known as irreconcilable differences. Because if the woman had to substantiate why she wants to get a divorce, they would not be able to get as many divorces as they get. Once again, so-called marriage in this society is just a merger of corporations. That's it. But you brothers, when you decide to quote unquote walk down the aisle and make that contractual commitment to a female, you have to know what you're getting into. Because the woman is variable, she's changeable, 
and they embrace that. So once again, when you start to engage in any type of real rapport with the woman, it's about evaluating who she actually is once you peel off that first layer. It's a matter of how many layers does she have because a woman is like an onion. She has a lot of layers. And how much you're able to tolerate a lot of her silly shit because most of these females, they have so much baggage. They have so much baggage from their bad decisions in the past. They start ranting and raving about previous relationships and the, and the quote-unquote bullshit they've gone through in previous relationships. And many of them are suffering from post-traumatic stress disorder. Have you ever seen any of these movies about soldiers who fought in Vietnam or the Gulf War, what have you? They still have flashbacks to their bad experiences at war. That's how many of these females are when it comes to their relationships. And it stops them from being able to have a real relationship with the new person because they're still thinking about what happened five, six niggas ago. And that's the main thing that's holding them back. He divorced the defendant and she's suing because she claims he bleached her clothes. Defendant Andre Alexander admits that he had an affair while married to a shoddy and says a shoddy could not get over it. In other words, the female, his ex-wife, was upset that he dared to do what she was doing. That's really what she was upset about. And once again, brothers, and a, and a lot of you guys don't understand this, um, the monogamy paradigm for relationships, it has created so much antipathy and confusion between the man and the woman because the man is being taught to try to subvert his essential nature while the woman is taught that she deserves to have a man all to herself, which naturally means that she's going to try to control the man because that's, that's the nature of the woman is to try to control and manipulate if she has the power or if you allow her to have that power. And all, all it ends up with is everybody being miserable. The man ends up being miserable. The main woman, quote unquote, ends up being miserable because the woman is never happy in the first place. And then the other woman ends up miserable because she has no man. When in an orderly environment, the man has two or three wives in order or two wives and a concubine or two in order. And it happens all over the world with various aboriginal men or men of color. This notion that a man can only have one woman that came with the so-called Caucasian and a lot of his law changes. And there's nothing wrong with it. There's nothing wrong with it according to scripture or according to the cultures of so many of the people of color all across the world. And as we see here in America... The relationship system is in shambles because now they, they're starting to move past the monogamy paradigm of one man, one woman. And now they're trying to promote same sex marriages to further promote population control. Bet she wanted him to forgive her for cheating. Andre insists to shoddy damaged his property first. Now, did you hear what the narrator stated? The narrator stated, according to this brother here, Andre Alexander, she never got over what he did. But she wanted him to forgive her for her quote unquote cheating. And I guarantee you, she was doing her thing before he was doing his thing or, or at the very least at the same time. And she she acknowledges that she only did it with one person, but it was probably more than that. So he's counter suing. Start with you. OK, um, well, I've been knowing Andre for over 20 years now. We met in high school. Um, we were married uh, in 2010. Uh, we got divorced. Uh, April 13th of this year was, it was finalized and bet money that their relationship started to take a downturn when they were officially married in 2010 I bet you everything was going relatively well until they got officially married in 2010 okay because once the female has that contractual control over you that's when she peels back another layer we have three children together um our relationship for the most part has been, you know, okay. I would say starting in 2015, we started having um, issues within our marriage as far as infidelity. Uh no, 2015 is when you found out that he was doing his thing. You probably were doing your thing all the way from 2010. All right, maybe he was doing his thing from back then as well. But like they say, by the time people are ready to acknowledge that there are issues in their relationship, there have already been issues for years before that. And once again, brothers, life is not life is not easy, but it's relatively simple. As long as you keep things simple, things will pretty much go smoothly. And when people try to inject themselves into your life that don't want to keep things simple or who cannot control their baggage, eventually they have to go or they're going to try to pull you down. And most of these females, they have a lot of baggage. So you have to assert 
if their baggage is going to be something worth carrying. You only have two arms. If a broad is coming at you <laughs> with four or five sets of luggage, then you have to you have to decide if it's going to be worth carrying. Because all these females, they have a lot of luggage, especially the older that they get. And you have to act as a psychiatrist. You have to act as a sage. You have to be somebody who has a lot of discretion and discernment. And you have to take your time with these women. A lot of them try to rush you. And you have to understand that you are the one who has to set the pace in, this, in the relationship, not them. If you allow the woman to establish the pace of the relationship, she's going to try to establish everything else. And it's not going to end up a good thing for you um financial issues with him you know supporting me with the rent and other responsibilities that we had as far as our children um so there were infidelity there was issues um he had an affair and i'm, I'm not going to say that i wasn't totally innocent i you know did things that i shouldn't have done or had an incident with one individual outside of my no you didn't have an incident an incident is when something happens unbeknownst to you or happens by accident that's an incident Right, what you had was you had some side dick and you quote unquote confessed to that probably after you caught him or, or maybe he felt like he wanted to confess to it. You know how these couples do. They go to couples therapy and, and he confessed to it or maybe she found something and he confessed to it. And then she felt emboldened to confess her own uh, indiscretions. Brothers, a lot of these women you're dealing with, <laughs> they fucking somebody else. You'll never know about it because the woman is a, is a professional liar. Supposedly she's going to get her hair done and she's going to get her nails done. She's really going to get her vagina done. That's why I say you have to put the most high first. This nonsense about happy wife, happy life. What that's meant to do is that's meant to try to calibrate you into thinking that you can make the woman happy. It's not your job to make the woman happy. It's her job to make you happy. And that's something that's very difficult for men to understand because they're being raised in these environments by women. So the woman is trying to re-engineer the mindset of the man. But I guarantee you, she was stepping out for a while before she finally decided to acknowledge what she was doing. Outside of my marriage, but um, upon talking to the woman that he was having an affair with, it seemed like it was ongoing and it was something that he was trying to start a whole new relationship. You know. Well, he wasn't trying to leave you, so really all he wanted was another wife. And there's nothing wrong with that. But let me say this, brothers, if you don't have the money, the currency to maintain your family, the amount of wives that you have, should be directly correlated with the amount of money that you're bringing in because you're going to have to provide for children. And we all know that the woman is not going to be willing to work with you if you have more than one woman or more than one family. They're going to put the financial onus on you because they're going to use whatever clout they have in this society. But that's fine because at the end of the day, you have to be fiscally responsible. A woman is nothing but another bill for the most part. So when you take on another woman, you take on another bill. Woman, woman is a bill and a headache. So that's another bill, another headache. I'm talking about if you're dealing with them in a wife capacity, right? Not a concubine capacity, a wife capacity. So the woman has to show you that she's worthy of being elevated to wife capacity. All these things are stage driven. Once again, you cannot allow a woman into your life to stipulate things to you. You cannot allow that. That's why it's important for you to empower yourself by making sure that you have the job or the career to provide for yourself, the apartment or the home to live in. Because at the end of the day, when you decide that you're going to allow yourself to be subverted by the woman, all she's going to do is connect the strings to the top of your head, start to dangle you around like Pinocchio. And you just cannot allow that. You know, we all make mistakes, you know, in a relationship or throughout a marriage. But yeah, supposedly it was a mistake because you fell on some dick. The only reason why she's saying that we all make mistakes is because she knew that she was doing her thing also. If it was just him, it would have been, I can't believe he did this. He broke my trust. He broke our, our union, our promise to one another, all this bullshit. And I get a lot of these, these chicks who try to act like they're going to teach the Bible. They come on my channel, Genesis 2 and 24 and all this other nonsense, trying to act like they can break down scriptures. First off, the only person that you should be trying to teach anything to is your son. Okay. Don't ever come on my channel trying to, t trying to teach the Bible to me and you're a woman. That's not your place. Your place is to confer with your man about the things that are important to you and his relationship and for the both of you to confer with your children. Not to be on here trying to teach me something because you don't have anything to teach me. I said that with all due respect. I always exhort that rapport between the man and his woman. 
because there are so many females on the internet who try to connect with you on a platonic level to try to push their Luciferian ideologies on you. And it's, it's very important that brothers stay vigilant in regards to that because they will try that. They are very focused on trying to push their feminism and their Luciferianism on men with their low level understanding of the Bible. And there's a reason why the scriptures tell you that a woman is not supposed to teach the Bible at all. Because a teacher is an entity of power. They're an entity of influence. And the woman is not, is not leading with logic, reason, and rationale. She's leading with her emotions. And that's what makes her so privy to being susceptible to Luciferian ideologies in the first place. Because Luciferianism is normally predicated around narcissism. Don't make them for how? What's the time limit? Yeah, two weeks. <laughs> don't make them for two weeks? Anything under two weeks is fine. Under two <laughs> weeks is fine. <laughs> I don't know. She said she made a mistake and hers is only one. Right. Uh, his is worse. I need to know what's worse. Yeah. <laughs> in other words, Judge Mathis is indirectly mocking her because he sees what she's doing. She's trying to create a differentiation between what she did and what he did. Or at least what she's confessing to doing. But I guarantee it was far more extensive. But most of these women, they, they got more skeletons than <laughs> they got more skeletons than a damn cemetery. Multiple occasions. Okay, I mean, it was multiple. Four, over four. Is probably what? over four. Over I mean, four. When, when I get divorced. Okay. Uh, under <laughs> under four, you all right? <laughs> yeah. Right. So you are all right. All right. Cause he's the one. Shouldn't have went over four. You would have still been married. <laughs> Let me hear your side. Well, as she stated. I've been knowing her since junior high, high school. We have three kids together. For the most part, it was, it was all right. Now, they both stated that the marriage was all right. You know what that sounds like to me? Sounds like some high school sweethearts and she got pregnant early. That's what that sounds like. Brothers, once again, take your time. All right? When it comes to these relationships, you take your time with these females. Because when you meet them, you're meeting their ambassador. You're not meeting them. After about three weeks or so, you'll see little inklings of the real them start to come out. They'll try to start throwing little tantrums. That's basically to see how you respond oftentimes. Or their post-traumatic stress disorder from their previous relationships will come out. Most of these women self-sabotage. So you have to give yourself time. Don't be, don't, don't be someone who just overlooks things. Right? Somebody can have a misstep. And as I've stated, if you're a man of wisdom, then you have to understand that you have to guide the woman. You have to help her out because most of them are, are functioning nut jobs. But all in all, it's not your job to tolerate anybody else's shit. Especially since most of these women today don't cook and don't clean. So really what they're bringing to the table for the most part is just sex. And if you're a man of wisdom, it's not even like they're guiding you in any way. A woman's job is to provide a support Meaning what? A help meet. That's her job. If she's not willing to do those things, if she's not willing to perform her role for you, then she has to go. But you have to make that evaluation. But what happens is so many of these brothers, they get caught up in these, in these relationship dynamics. At 17, 18 years old, they get a chick pregnant because they went to the prom together with some woman. And you have to understand something. The woman today is not being raised to be a compliment to the man. She's being raised to be his competition. So you have to understand that before you make these early decisions. But around, like she said, we was married in 2010, 2015, we started having problems. As she said, I cheated, but... Over four times? Uh, not over four times. What? All he was doing was looking for another wife. That's all. And that's the nature of a man. But once again, because they basically are trying to re-engineer men to, uh, to sit at home with a woman who, for the most part, <laughs> ain't really going to like him after a while because the woman is a child with titties. Because of these things, these men are sitting home miserable. A lot of these married guys, they're sitting up in a house with some woman scared to death. They're walking on pins and needles because any little thing they do, she's going to yell at them like he's her oldest son as opposed to her husband. And if he doesn't have a better job than the woman, which in the case of the so-called black man is often the case, He's going to be ridiculed. He's going to be emasculated. He's going to be denigrated. He might get kicked out the house or there'll be constant threats of him getting kicked out the house. So it's all because of that. And then, of course, you have the, the you know, the land ownership rights that have been clearly diminished in this society. All that's to take away from your manhood or to try to. 
Now, shout out to my brother, Yao Sop. He sent me a clip today of an Arab man who was being interviewed by a Caucasian reporter somewhere over in Saudi Arabia, most likely. And uh, the Caucasian reporter asked the Arab man how many children he has. And the Arab man said 84 or 81, something like that. And the reporter said, wow, 84. He said, how many wives? The Arab man said 17. <laughs> and then they panned to all his wives. And they all looked, you know, peaceable and peaceful, what have you. And the Arab man asked the Caucasian reporter how many wives he had. Oh, no, I think the Caucasian reporter, he just put forth that he only had one wife. And the Arab man just started cracking up. Because <laughs> his attitude was, you know, and in that world, their attitude is that having one wife is like opening up a bag of chips and only having one chip and then putting the, the bag back in the refrigerator. Like, who just has one chip? <laughs> But in that society, everything is orderly. The woman is raised to be a wife. So they don't look at the man as competition. They don't even look at other women as competition. Their job is to make sure that their husband is happy. And when their mind is calibrated that way, everything runs smoothly. In this society, the woman is raised to believe that she not only is equal to the man, but that she's above the man. That's why nobody's happy. Your society cannot operate on the whims of a woman. It's going to destroy itself. Bottom line. That's why I let the I got to say, before it was cool. Your Honor, so I got from the other woman that was Can I remarry you? No, it was more than four, Your Honor. If it proves that it was four, can I remarry you? <laughs> Go ahead, I can't sir. I'm just having fun with you guys. You looking so distraught, you been out of here. It's not that he's looking so distraught. It's just that he's done with this broad. You can tell. A lot of these guys... <laughs> How these guys, man, they suffered in silence. You know, they talk about these women with that battered wife syndrome. A lot of these so-called husbands are sitting up in the living room all day with the Al Bundy syndrome. They just come home, they sit on the couch, they put their hand in, it, <laughs> in their waistband, and they just want to watch the game and, and go to sleep, you know? Their life is just about getting up in the morning and going to work and trying to do whatever they can to keep their, their woman's mouth quiet. Come home, the, the kids is shitting on him, the wife is shitting on him, the wife is probably having sex with some guy from work. Uh, he's trying to figure out how come his wife don't want to make love to him. It's because all her coochie juice is being used on the guy from work. <laughs> they get to the point where they're just done. I'd say, <laughs> lighten it up, man, lighten it up. You're all divorced now, but during the marriage, she said it was relatively fine. Like she said, I had an affair. I let her bash me out about it. Come to find out why she's bashing me about me cheating. She tells me she cheated with somebody. Of course she did. Don't you know that for the most part, <laughs> when you're dealing with these females and they're so paranoid about a man having another woman, it's because they either have another man or they plan on having another man. It's a control issue. That's all it's about. See, when you have more than one woman, you have options. And once again, that reinforces the mindset of a ruler and of an administrator. So when you can only have one woman, that, that makes you look at the woman not as somebody who you're the head of, but somebody that you're in an equal partnership to. So now the energy of the woman has just as much say as your energy. And really in this society, the energy of the woman has more say than the energy of the man. So now this society operates according to the vibration of the woman. So everything is about your emotions and how you feel as opposed to what is. And once again, that's why everybody is unhappier here. That's why there's a skyrocketing in the use of antidepressants. Because the woman is never happy, man. I don't care what nobody says. You can get mad about that if you want to. They're never happy. Because <laughs> their life is not, is not based in, in things of substance. The man, when he's operating according to how he's supposed to operate, you know, you're basing your contentment in things of substance. A woman is very, very rarely ever content because everything with her is based on comparison. Oh, she looks better than me. Her hair's longer than mine. Her titties are bigger than mine. Everything is about that. Oh, the man gets all the attention. How come I don't? Men in their right mind, they're not, they're not operating on that wavelength. She couldn't let my cheating go, but her one incident was cool. So, we Of course, that's why the woman's not supposed to be a judge. We separated. Doing after that, we tried to, I guess, re reconcile anything you I did. Or any counseling? Command. No. How old are your children? 
The oldest will be 18 and our youngest are twins are nine. So in other words, like I stated, they got married in 2010. He stated that the oldest is going to be 18. So that means that they had the oldest probably sometime in 2000 or 2001. So everything was probably going well until they got married. All of a sudden they got married and now you're more concerned about trying to make sure that the corporate union stays intact than the relationship. A solid family. This troubles me to hear that a 20 year uh, relationship where at least the first uh, 15 years uh, were fine. I didn't hear her say you were abusive. I didn't hear her say that the children didn't like you or that you beat the kids or you never came home or that you gave your money away to women on the street or at the liquor store or at the bar or at the dope house or at the casino. In other words, Judge Mathis, what you're really trying to say is that you step out on your wife all the time. It's not that big a deal. That's, what you, that's really what you're saying. Uh, he's looking at the chick like, OK, so he got him some side pussy. What's the problem? Is he providing for his children? <laughs> like, shit, I got, a, I got a girl under the, under my desk right now, under my robe. Is that a problem? <laughs> Seems like you all could have worked this out. I'm disappointed. It's not too late to go to counseling. I'm kidding about getting remarried, but people do it all the time. I know some folks who have been married three times to each other. Married, divorced, married, divorced, married. <laughs> And that one lasted. So, <laughs> yourselves at least two more times. How's that? <laughs> if you have to get married to the same person three times, you know what that means. That probably and and the third one lasted. That probably means that um, the first couple of times, either one party or both party, they didn't get enough. They didn't get enough rods or vaginas out of their system yet. That's what that's about. Remember, in this society. Settling down, for the most part, is about people not having as many options as they once had. Being able to be with someone, and when I say someone, I'm talking about a woman, because I'm speaking towards you brothers. My channel is a pro-true channel geared towards the so-called black man. In this society, being able to deal with a woman who knows how to be with one man, it's going to be very, very, very hard to do. That's why I tell brothers that you have to put the most high first. You can't put the woman on a pedestal. Because the woman is going to play the nice girl act, the, the nice girl role, especially early, because you're the new thing. It's like a new toy. And then all of a sudden you're going to know that she's going to get mad about something that you might deem to be insignificant. It's not that, it's not that she's necessarily flipping out. It's just that she's ready to peel back that first layer to show you this is who I really am. So once again, you have to be able to discern if that's something that you can tolerate. Have you seen the woman at her worst? Is that something that you can deal with? Because is it a constructive meltdown as opposed to a destructive meltdown? Because all these women have meltdowns. It don't matter who they are. <laughs> it just sounds so good. I'm sorry to hear that you all did this uh, and couldn't work it out, perhaps with marriage counseling. But give us some thought. 5000 for damaged property. How does he owe you for this? Okay, um, January 14th of 2017, um, I came across uh, the phone records of the defendants. And of his other wife, or concubine. And I noticed that he was having um, a conversation with a particular individual. You know, by a number, you can't tell who it is. Um, he stated that it was a co-worker, it was nothing going on. Um, we got into an altercation. And let me say this, brothers, <laughs> nine out of ten times, Probably 99 out of 100 times. Uh, if you're going to be approached by another woman who wants to add herself to your retinue, or if your woman is going to get approached by another man, or hell, in this day and age, another woman who wants to do something with her is going to be in the workplace. Okay? The workplace is the new dating center. It's the new psychiatric institute because this is where a lot of these people go to seek support. This is where a lot of them are making quote unquote friends and things of that nature. It's in the workplace. And ever since they have allowed the woman to join into the workplace, that's what it basically is. Most people today who are with their significant other, they met them in the workplace. So you do have to be aware of that component. Um, as he usually does when I bring up things that I have concerns or questions about, he gets defensive. When he gets defensive, he starts to yell, he starts to argue regardless of the... Well, the reason why he probably, quote-unquote, gets defensive is because you're getting offensive. 
Now, people love to use that term whenever they're, they're accusatory towards you, that you're getting defensive. Well, sometimes people get defensive because you're getting offensive. It's in human nature to defend themselves, especially if they believe that they're being assaulted with false allegations. But once again, brothers, if you're in a dynamic with a female where she's, be where she's becoming too accustomed to speaking out of turn towards you or her tone is getting out of pocket, uh, you have to start considering your exit strategy. Okay? Because with women, things don't get better. They get worse. Because once the female feels like you're comfortable with her being destructive and disrespectful, she's going to keep ratcheting it up. All right? That's the nature of the woman. The woman is not respectful off of general principles in general. In general, the woman is respectful because she has no other option. Women are relatively basic. They're creatures of option. It's like, you know, you have these females that tell you about how, you know, they want to meet a man and they want to take their time getting into bed with that man. That's all that's bullshit. When a woman is dealing with you and she wants to take her time and getting into bed with you, it's, <laughs> it's probably because she feels like this is this is going to be the way to keep you around longer. Or maybe you just don't trigger that freak DNA in them. Because, you know, for a fact. That when you when you trigger the freak DNA in a woman, she's ready to give you the draws the first night. And that's the bottom line of it. So all this nonsense that they try to talk about how, you know, um, you know, men try to rush them into bed and this, this, this and that. The woman be, especially these women today, as soon as you exchange one text message, the next text message is them, they butt naked ass or they breast seize or they vagina or some shit. So. It goes from, you no, know, it's from a person by person perspective. It's all about what you trigger in the woman. You know, so when you hear these women, oh, well, you know, I like to wait. Uh, you know, I, I don't, I don't want to rush it. Bullshit. If the kids are around, he doesn't care. Um, the argument led to me contacting uh, this other particular woman because he was, I didn't feel he was being a, tr a forefront. He was no, you was looking for drama. You was trying to get the scoop on him because... As has already been established, he stepped out on you before, most likely because he was not happy with you. Probably because the convention of marriage was not what he thought it was going to be. He was having issues with whatever it was that was going on. Who knows? I'm not saying that it was her fault per se. Maybe she was argumentative or was always looking for drama. Or, or maybe he was just somebody who wanted another, you know, another set of draws. <laughs> oh, he wanted another woman. But once again, because in this society, they promote the monogamy paradigm. It normally ends up with everybody being unhappy. There's a reason why the divorce rate in this society is so high. And then you have so many men who are so willing to play the side dude to these women. Right? If more men understood that every man out here should have three, four, five women in order, in order. Then, you know, you watch how much more orderly things would be. But now the men think and act like women. So it's just confusion on top of confusion. He wasn't being honest. Um, upon contacting uh, the woman, she stated that they weren't having a sexual uh, affair. However, they were talking. Uh In other words, she was ready to give him the draws. Either that or she's lying and he was already hitting it. Um, they, again, they work together. So uh, my question to Andre is, well, why are you talking to her so much? When I look at the phone bill, it's like two hours, 50 minutes. And it's all during the times when I'm not around. Because he was tired of talking to your ass. I mean, this ain't rocket science. If he was talking to her so much and it was happening during the hours you wasn't around, that means what? He don't want to talk to you. And number two, either he hitting it or he trying to hit it. He looking for another wife. That, that, that's the bottom line of that. Now, let's check your phone records and let's see how many dudes on your job you was talking to. And if you wasn't talking to dudes on your job, it's probably because there wasn't any that found you attractive. Once again, brothers, if... if <laughs> If she was being approached by some dude on her job that she found attractive, she'd be on her phone all damn damn night too. You work with her, you see her at work, you talk to her before you go to work, you talk to her when you get off of work. What's going on? You know what's going on. He trying to get the draws. Um, he can come up with, it was always, oh, she's asking me about a car, she's asking me about this. I'm like, are you the only guy in Los Angeles she can ask? She doesn't. Yes, he's the only one who knows how to handle a stick shift. She doesn't have other male <laughs> friends? Was he a mechanic? No. Okay. No. Absolutely. He was already give her a tune up <laughs> and a lube job. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. That's what I'm trying to figure out. So anyway, um, she had asked him if he had moved back home 
um, you know, with his wife, and he told her he did not, which was not the case. So in my in my opinion, it's like you're trying to keep both options open. Yes, ding, good job. He's trying to have two wives. Nothing wrong with it. Nothing wrong with it. And I know a lot of people gonna get upset by that. It's okay. But once again, brothers, just because you can have more than one woman doesn't mean that you should. But you have to utilize discernment. You don't try to turn a whore into a housewife. A lot of these chicks, they know that they have a good man. They try to hold you down for themselves, even if they know that, that they're not really on your level. You need to have the ability to know the difference between a concubine and a wife. And that's why I've made videos on that issue. And I'm going to be covering that again uh, using another movie down the line. But no, there's nothing wrong with a man having more than one woman. All right. Like I had one of these guys ask me, well, what about Deuteronomy 17th chapter when it talked about um, a king, not not um, multiplying wives that was talking about to an exorbitant degree. And that was a prophecy pertaining to Solomon. And I'll probably be delving more into that. The Bible is a prophetic book. That's why it led off with that a king should not multiply horses to himself and then also not multiply wives. That was a prophecy concerning Solomon because Solomon put his spirit into his possessions. It had nothing to do with a man not being allowed to have more than one woman, because if that was the case, you would not have Deuteronomy 21 and 15. OK. But yeah, I say that all the time for these guys who um, who think that Deuteronomy, the 17th chapter is forbidding a man from having more than one woman. Well, next time that you're driving through pastoral land and you see a farmer and he has more than one horse, you tell him, hey, according to Deuteronomy 17, you can't have more than one horse and watch how he looks at your dumb ass. And that's the reason why we're in the turmoil that we're in now. Why not just be honest? When I find out um, evidence or phone bills say something else, then you want to back. Oh, it's not this. It's not I would get to the property that was damaged. Okay, so um, after we had an um, a argument about the, this particular uh, woman that he was supposedly seeing or not seeing, um, I asked him, I said, well, is this probably best if you just leave? At that time, we weren't really living together. He had a few things over my house. We had already separated prior. So in other words... <laughs> In other words, y'all wasn't living together. Y'all had already, quote unquote, separated. But you was mad that he was talking to another woman. Y'all wasn't living together. So really what you was frustrated at was the fact that he was able to get somebody else and you were not. Or maybe you had somebody else also and you were just frustrated that he had somebody else also. And once again, brothers, that's why you cannot waste time trying to figure out the rationale of the woman because she has none. Any man who's trying to figure out the rationale of the woman, you're a damn fool. The woman is a child with breasts. She's going to do what's best for her. So if being with you is in her mind what's best for her at that time, then that's what she's going to do. That's why in a real society, you have restrictions on what the woman is allowed to do. Because if you allow the woman to do whatever she wants, it's going to bring confusion to everyone, to the men, the women, the children, everybody involved. What it's incumbent upon for the man is to utilize discernment, discretion and respect and to not take advantage of the power that we have. Because we were created to be the head of the woman, whether they like it or not. So the main responsibility of the man is to not abuse his power. But that's why she was mad. They was already separated. Why is she worried about who he's talking to for? Prior the previous year, when he wouldn't voluntarily leave, I started to take his things outside. Um, he refused to leave. He then grabbed a bottle of bleach and he uh, then attempted to, not attempted, but he bleached all my clothes. The clothes that was in my closet, I had clothes folded up. So he was the first my... one to initiate uh, damaging property? Correct. Correct. I mean, I don't know if you call set his things, things out, outside no. damaging property. I didn't damage his property, but I did set his things outside first. And Yes, that, I'm sure that's exactly what happened. You picked up all his clothes, nicely folded, and you left them right outside on the front of your home, set up, set on top of a towel so that they would not get damaged. I'm sure that's exactly what happened. And as a result of that, he then took the bleach and started to damage my clothes. Okay, okay you have a list? Yes, sir, I have evidence, sir. Me? I have pictures. Well, all right. We got to argument. I said, I'm going to leave. Mm -hmm. I started getting my stuff out, sitting it outside on the porch. As I'm going back in to get the rest of my things, Miss Lyles is taking my brand new shoes. Everybody kind of know I'm a shoe man. So she knows what shoes are my favorite, what shoes I like. She takes my shoes, start chunking them over the fence, over the wall, throwing them in the trash can. I tell her over several times, leave my stuff alone. Just let me get my stuff so I can leave. Right, but bro, we already know. You, you telling her leave your stuff alone, 
you're in what she deems to be her home assuming that her name is the name on the lease etc even if both of your names are on the lease we all know that if she calls authorities or the authorities she can have you taken out of the home she knows that and you know that so the woman's not going to deal in an orderly fashion that's why it's always incumbent upon a man to make sure that he has his own abode all right i say that all the time you don't move in with the woman unless you can afford to pay your share of the fees, the rent, the utilities, the mortgage, or what have you, and you also can have your own place on the side. Because these are the type of hijinks that will ensue. Because the woman just feels like she's been disrespected or whatever. She's just going to start to throw your stuff around. In the midst of that, I had just bought a brand new bottle of bleach and some trash bags to the house. I kept telling her, leave my stuff alone. On the couch was a pile of not just Miss Lyle's clothes, because it was also my clothes as well. That's not true. I grabbed the pile of the clothes, take them outside, throw them on the ground right next to where my stuff is. She takes another pair of my white shoes, brand new shoes. She chunks them over the fence. One in the trash can is messed up. I reach over Let right see there. Your pictures as well. Let me say this, brothers. I mean, God forbid that you get caught up in a situation like that with the woman, but try to keep a cool head. Because the woman will try to throw a tantrum to try to get you to respond so that hopefully she can get you caught up in the, uh, you know, in the penal system or in the court system. Because that's their M.O. That's why the scriptures tell you what, there's no wickedness like the wickedness of a woman. I'm not saying that. The scriptures tell you that. In Ecclesiastes, it's the 25th chapter. So you have to think ahead, man. You, know, you have to utilize to the best of your ability. You have to utilize a cool spirit. You, know, you have to try to stay cool headed. And calm and collect. I know this is going to be difficult in life. People try to provoke you, but especially when you're dealing with the woman, you always have to make sure that you have your options open. A lot of times, men lose their composure because they feel trapped. Number one, a lot of men feel foolish because their mentality was or is, I trusted this woman. I decided to open up my emotions to this woman, and now she's flipping out. And that causes the man to flip out and lose his composure because <laughs> it takes a lot more. For a man to become emotionally invested in anything than it does a woman. That's why it's easier for a woman to turn off her emotions because they're so willy-nilly with their bullshit. A lot of men have a hard time understanding. They say, oh man, I was with this woman for three years and then she broke up with me and a week later she's with some new guy smiling all lovey-dovey. Because the woman is... <laughs> the woman is a child, man. <laughs> you gotta put the most high first, bro. That's it. For a man to open up himself to the woman. That's why you see these stories about these men. They allow themselves to fall in love with the woman and things go wrong. And then they kill the woman, kill the child, kill himself. That happens more with the, with the man than it does with the woman. Because it takes a lot more for a man to invest himself emotionally into a convention like that. Than the woman. All right. A woman to fall in love with, with Joe tomorrow. And then the next week fall in love with James. <laughs> Next we got that She's in love with Nicholas So you have to make sure That your head is on straight When you're dealing with these broads As well She has pictures So This is the damaged property account Is suing for Yes sir I hear why you say You damaged You put the bleach on Because she kept uh, Messing with your things But did you get it back Was, she, was it damaged uh, You yes. want 3100 Sounds this like if she was damaged. Throwing them over the fence You could have gotten them back oh, If I they got saw her Throw them in the garbage You could have pulled it out Uh I got them out and went and got the stuff, but the stuff was damaged. I mean, I had damaged in what way? Uh, the shoes, one pair of shoes was blue suede, brand new. So when who the hell are you, Elvis? <laughs> they brought step in your blue suede shoes. But when she threw them over the wall, it was moist outside, and she threw them in kind of a wet, muddy area yeah. for the blue suede. All right, ma'am, did you do these things? You threw us things over no, the fence sir, and in the I, garbage. I don't not one thing. piece. I did, uh, like I said, play. Now, did you hear what this broad said? This is how you know she's lying. Judge Mathis asked her, did you throw his shoes over the wall into the garbage can, etc.? She said, I don't recall. <laughs> First off, she stated that when she removed his items, she acted like she placed them outside. Now, we all know that she was flipping out. She was trying to live out her Angela Bassett shit. You know, that was programming for the woman. Burning people's clothes and bleaching their clothes and throwing them out and all this other shit. That started from, or well, that really became popularized, I should say, back in the 90s with uh, that Angela Bassett scene in Waiting to Exhale. 
And now all these females do that. And you notice, and people, once again, people get upset when I say that the woman is just a child with titties. But you'll notice that when we watch these court cases and they talk about a woman uh, bleaching clothes and uh, throwing rocks through windows, stabbing tires, keying cars, all these things, the, the audience laughs. But if a man was to do it, they would take it with far more solemnity, far more seriousness, because a man is held to a higher standard of conduct than the woman is. The woman is expected to, um, you know, to utilize childlike behavior. Because that places things outside. I yeah, but no, you didn't throw any over the fence or in the garbage. Yeah, I threw his shoes in the garbage. Yes, sir. Now, brothers, did you hear that? She said, I, I threw his shoes into the garbage. Yes, sir. Well, wait a minute. I thought that you were just saying that you just nicely placed his clothes outside. Now you're changing up. But, brothers, you know what? I don't really blame her. A lot of you brothers, you know, you're dealing with the woman. That's your girl or whatever you call her. You know, your quote-unquote wife or your quote-unquote concubine. You're not living there. So any item that you bring over to a person's home, especially a person that you've already had issues with in the past, should not be anything of importance. I mean, you have your items of importance in your abode where they can be safely stored. If you've had issues with a woman in the past, if you've had your share of ups and downs with her, I'm sure that this is not the first time that she has resorted to you know these type of antics you should have already foreseen that these things could happen well i have valuable items in her home for unless you're hoping to be able to move back in with her because you cannot provide for yourself and that always gets me back to my original point brothers you have to make sure that you have a decent job preferably your own career before you start or initiate a serious relationship with the woman man because in this society, once again, the woman is not raised to be a wife. So these high school sweetheart relationships, they're not going to work in the long run. It's not the 30s and the 40s and the 50s where people fell in love at 15 or 16 years old and they stayed married for 70 years. The woman is raised today to compete against men and to always hold men under a great deal of scrutiny. Every little thing that a man does, oh, see, you remind me of my boyfriend, Seven boyfriends ago, he did that. I'm not dealing with that bullshit anymore. All that nonsense. Because they're suffering from post-traumatic stress disorder. So you, you have to understand the nature of the woman. You have to understand these things aforetime. And make sure that you always put yourself in a position of power. That's the most important thing. When is your um, divorce completed? Uh, it was completed this year of April. Did you all bring this property damage issue up to that judge? Well, no, because before this incident, say the everything was filed, but it hasn't, been, it hadn't been turned in. Well, you can still amend it and turn it in because that judge has already heard everything regarding property that is under his jurisdiction. You all divorced while this was pending. You all had knowledge that this had occurred. This should have been part of your property claim. You should have said during that divorce hearing, Judge, she owes me $3,000 for gym shoes and clothes. Judge, he owes me $5,000 for the things that he did to my property and the bleach. And then the judge would have said, okay, I'm either going to assess a charge or divide the property that gives you 3000 more for your shoes or my property division decision is to disallow that. That was that judge's purview. I can't reopen his case, his or her case. Hopefully it's a woman. We need more women judges. No, sir, we do not need more women judges. We need more good judges. That's what we need. Just for him to be a judge, quote unquote, and say that we need more quote unquote judge, judges or evaluators based on gender shows you that there's an agenda. We need more good judges, not more women judges. We already know most of these women, they go, all they're going to do is they're going to take the judge's bench and put on a black robe and try to castigate men. That's really going to be their MO. I can't reopen her case. She has to reopen it herself. You all have to. And the funny thing is that in most of these court cases, even the male judges tend to prefer the woman. So really, what's the point? What's the point of having more female judges just to bring an even harder hammer down on the men? You have to amend the decision. You have to submit a petition to amend your divorce decree saying there was new information that wasn't included.
At this point, I have to dismiss your case. I have no jurisdiction. All this happened before your divorce. Your divorce occurred. You didn't mention it. Now you got to go and reopen it and see if you can mention it then. Have a good day. Both your claims is here. In other words, they have to go before their previous judge who presided over their divorce because when they're divorced, that's like the dissolution of a corporate merger. They're no longer one business. Now they go back to being two separate businesses. So it has to be, it has to be evaluated what the financial loss was during their corporate merger. Once again, brothers, in this society, all marriage is, is a merger of two corporations. It's a business. That's all it is. Either the woman is willing to be with you or she's not. It's up to you whether or not you decide to get married. That's your own personal preference, your own personal decision. But understand what you're getting into. And there's no way in the world that anybody should be getting married at 18, 19, 20 years old. When you're around these females, you have to be around them and get to know them over the course of years to figure out if, if that's something that you want to do. And when I say that, I'm not even just talking about marriage, quote unquote. I'm talking about being serious with that person. A lot of these people are not serious. A lot of them have demons on them. So you have to be able to evaluate how deep are those demons and if it's worth you spending your time with that person. Because most demonically possessed people do not want help. Most of them just want to try to bring you down with them. at this point i just want to co-parent and move on with my life um you know i'm done with the situation and trying to amend what seems to be broken it's never going to be fixed i'm just happy for the situation to be over with and done with that's it and all that probably could have been alleviated had they both understood that he can have more than one woman but you know like i said i'm sure that that's going to be very controversial it is what it is so peace